All right, so here's a barred owl that was a roadkill in Stillwater, Oklahoma on May 20th, 2017. And um, just a couple things about plumage and pattern in barred owl. So the, uh, the throat and the breast feathers have these sort of horizontal stripes. Each little contour feather has its own number of alternating dark and light bands going horizontally. But below that, from the breast down to the belly, Barred owl feathers, the contour feathers, have a longitudinal stripe down the center. Well, there you go. So a real difference in pattern uh, in these two feather tracks. And it's that effect which is what gives the bird its name, like bars, like prison bars. So that's barred owl. Um, all owls have um, legs that are fully feathered all the way down to the toes. So there's the talons on a barred owl. And you can see, um, you can watch the action on the grip here just by flexing a little bit at the ankle joint and just bending that, the tendons running across are going to give that bird a really firm grip even without having to expend a lot of uh, muscle energy to hold on to something very tight. And if you extend it out, of course, that grip opens up. So I can feel that and it's just about feeling like it's gonna pierce the skin. Um, the other leg on this bird is, is sadly, this is part of the uh, injury this, this bird sustained. This, is, this leg is broken here. Um, just a couple of other things about uh, feathering on owls, and we'll take a look at uh, the wing while it's still sort of nice and long and pliable. So we've got primaries and secondaries, um, and in owls they're very well adapted to uh, efficient and silent flight. In this case, um, one of the things that's really dramatic on owls is that the leading edge, and it's very well developed on the first primary, the leading edge, the one that really is slicing the air, has these uh, almost like little comb structure. And that really helps to, um, to cut down the sound of the air passing over the wing while the bird is in flight. Some of their other feathers will have that same structure. You can see uh, some other places where it's kind of comey, but it's best developed on this uh, on this first primary. We can also see the shape of the flight feathers. We don't think of owls as having uh, really dramatically uh, emarginated feather tips at the primaries, but they actually do. So it's much wider at the base, narrower at the tip. And this bird, of course, is showing us evidence of active molt. So we've got uh, probably the most obvious thing is that this feather is quite a bit shorter than the adjacent feathers. And this is a feather that's coming in right now. This is an older generation of feathers, and this is the newer generation of feathers. Um, new, old. And that molt limit that you're seeing right here, the older feathers are a little bit more rufous, a little bit more sort of dull brown, um, as opposed to a darker brown or gray in the newer, more adult feathers. And you can really see a difference in the rachis. So the, the central shaft of the feather is sort of a medium brown on the old feather and a very dark brown, almost black, on the new feather. Here in the greater coverts, we've got some active molt, including this one right here, which is a pin feather or in brush. So it's erupting from its sort of waxy sheath, actively coming in. And then one other sort of structural thing is the allula, also known as the bastard wing. So um, birds have this three feathered little tiny wing that sticks out in front of what we usually think of as their wing. And this helps with uh, maintaining lift at slow speeds. As the bird is approaching stalling speed, uh, they can extend the allula and that will help them get a little bit more lift as they're starting to stall out. And of course, we've got old feather, old feather, new feather coming in. So it's a new allula feather is coming in right there.